Hi there, our goal today is to continue the work we had done on the simple video game and specifically see what we can do to make it a little more challenging, like have the Space Invader actually fire at our player. So let's review what we've got in the app. It's got three screens. There's this opening screen that lets you click this button to start the game. Then there is the game screen where you play the game. And then when the missile hits the Space Invader, it goes to the victory screen, which displays a little message. So we're going to actually strip this down and simplify it a little bit before we go all out with um, adding the enemy missile. So what do I mean by this? We don't really need the victory screen, by which I mean the start screen has the start game button. And the only thing that's really different about the victory screen is this canvas that displays a message when you win. As it turns out, we can actually handle all of that on screen one. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete the victory screen. And this is a really nice example to see because removing the screen is considered a big deal in App Inventor because once it's gone, it's gone. So when you click remove screen, you have to enter the screen's name. So victory screen, and then it'll ask you if you want to create a checkpoint before deleting. And so the checkpoint is going to be an extra save of the app, which includes what you just destroyed. And so it's often a good idea to leave that checked um, just in case you want to go back and get something out of it. So anyway, I'm going to delete and then it really, really wants me to make sure I'm deleting it. So I click OK and the victory screen goes away. Now, the question is, how are we going to get our victory message onto the start screen? So let's um, go ahead and add a canvas here. And this is similar to what we had done previously with the victory screen. And we're going to have the canvas fill the parent. Now we're going to do something a little bit subtle. So in when our screen gets initialized, we are going to tell uh, do some things with the canvas. One thing we want to do is set the font size of the canvas to be nice and big. That is, we want the letters that it displays to be big letters. So let's go ahead and try a font size of 60. Then what we're going to do is draw onto the canvas our message. Now the question is, where is this message coming from? So first, let me grab the draw text. And so where this message comes from is somewhere pretty special. And we're going to go over how to get this in, in a few moments. But under the control menu, uh, there is a block called get start value. Now, when we first open the app, there isn't going to be anything there. And so this just draws something neutral, uh, something harmless, you know, empty text. But later on, we can actually, once we switch to the screen, assign a start value, and that's how our message will appear there. So let's go ahead and place it on the screen. We're going to do a little math for the placement. So the Y coordinate will be the height of the canvas divided by two so that we place it halfway down the canvas. Now, what about the X? Well, if we just uh, use half of the width, then the leftmost letters start in the middle and kind of go to the end. So I'm going to do something a little bit different here, and we will still make use of the width of the canvas. What I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply it by a fraction and by doing so, so I'm going to multiply it by 0.35 so that it's 35% of the way over. And from there, you know, the letters can kind of balloon out. So now how is it that we're going to determine the start value? So like I said, when you first run the app, there won't be anything. There won't be a message, and that's not a problem. Where we want the message is after we win the game. So let's go back to the game screen. 
and go to this block here. So uh, we're trying to open a screen that actually no longer exists. What we want is screen one, but we don't want to just open it. We want to open it with uh, this start value. So we're going to use this block over here. So we want to open screen one. OK, this block goes away with a start value. And we're going to use some text and we're going to give it the value. You win. With a couple of exclamation points for effect. All right, so now what we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to scan our QR code and connect up. Oh, actually, before I do this, I want to start at screen one. So I need to switch over to screen one when I connect so that it actually starts there. All right, so now I want to scan the QR code. I am scanning, scanning, scanning. OK, so we're waiting for the app to open up. And there it is. OK, so notice initially there is no start value, and so it's pretty blank in there. So now I'm going to play the game a little bit. And I'm going to fire. OK, I, I fired at him, and I got the you win message. And in fact, maybe it's it's a little too close to the edge, actually. Let me play around with um, this value here. So let's try, um, I don't know, 0.5, say. All right, so now I'm going to play the game again and see if the situation improves. OK, I defeated it. And yeah, 0.5 actually works uh, really, really well. OK, I guess uh, in the end it was the same thing as dividing by two. All right, well, it's fine. It looks good. OK, so now let's um, add in the possibility of the bad guy winning. So I am going to go ahead and reset the connection and go back to the game screen. And now we want the bad guy to drop bombs. So let's start designing how that's going to happen. We'll make the bad guys bomb also a ball. And just to make it visually distinctive, let's 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 make it I don't know, orange, orange. So bad guys missiles are going to be orange. I'm going to rename it. So we're going to call this the invader missile. And for that matter, I want to rename the sprite for the good guy. So we'll just call this the spaceship. There we go. That's going to make some of the code easier to read. Initially, Neither of these missiles need to be visible. They can become visible when we fire. So I'm actually going to make them both invisible by unchecking the visible field there. And so re recall when we fire, we set it to be we set visible to be true. And so just by making it not visible initially, we just don't really need that. OK. Cool. So let's now start thinking about programming the bad guy missile. The first thing we got to think about is when's the bad guy going to fire? You know, this is a little tricky because unlike when the spaceship fires, uh, the bad guy needs to just kind of decide on its own volition. And this is a computer. It doesn't have volition. So what are we going to do? So I'm going to use a, a pretty clever solution here. And the big idea of this solution, we're actually going to go click on sensors. We're going to go to the sensors menu and we're going to grab ourselves a clock, a clock. So a clock is a sensor that just detects what time is it? And we can program a clock to do things um what at any interval we want so let's look up here at the properties to see when that happens so it we've checked that it's enabled so it's going to do things 
And then it's got an interval. So the interval is the number of milliseconds between when the clock will tick. And whenever the clock ticks, that is something we can employ with a when block. Uh, it's, it's another kind of an event. So I'm going to go to my clock. And so when clock dot timer, that means the clock is ready to do something. This is going to be pretty similar to what happens with the spaceship. So when we touch down with the spaceship, we're going to set, instead of setting the player missile to be visible, we're going to set the invader missile to be visible. And we're going to set the X and Y for the invader missile. So we want to set the invader missiles X to be wherever the invader itself happens to be. So let's look for the space invaders X. So we'll put, we'll make its X the space invaders X. And now we're going to make its Y the space invaders Y. So the missile starts where the space invader is located. Next, we need to give it a speed and a heading. So this will be similar to what we did with the player missile. So we'll give the invader missile the same speed of 100. Now, its heading is going to be a little bit different. So let's set its heading. So the heading for the player missile to fire upwards is 90. This invader missile needs to fire downwards. And so we need to add 180 to 90 so that it kind of spins around the circle. And that gives us a heading of 270. Let's try this out. So let me go ahead and scan the QR code and connect. Okay, so now it's bombing me. Check it out. Now it's actually kind of dangerous to me. Well, it would be if I did anything to detect collisions on it. I mean, I can fire at it. And it fires back at me. And it's kind of fun to try to actually win this uh, sideways. Okay, there we go. So now I won. All right, fantastic. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and reset the connection. So we're almost there. We've just got a little bit more to do, which is we need to detect when my spaceship gets hit by the bad guy. And so this is gonna look very, very similar to this block, except instead of player missile, we're gonna use invader missile. So when the invader missile collides with another. Now this other is not the space invader. This other is the spaceship. Now, of course, when this happens, we're not gonna say you win. We're going to say, sorry, I will just say, huh? you lose, dot, dot, dot. There we go. Okay, let's try it out. So I am going to First, switch back to the opening screen. I'm going to switch to screen one. Then I'm going to go to the AI companion. I'm going to scan the QR code. And now, um, I'm going to start the game. And now it's bombs away. Oh, man, I lost. Bummer. Well, I'm going to play again because I like video games. Okay. So now. Oops. Yeah, that time I won. And what you'll find is if you play this game a bit like this, um, it gets pretty predictable because you know that the bad guy is going to fire every second. And so... Based on that predictability, you know, you can kind of plan accordingly and very easily win. So what we want to do now 
is make it a little less predictable. That is, we don't necessarily want him to fire every second. We want it to be random, but but we do want it to happen. Oh, I need to reset. So the, I keep resetting the connection because then the game starts up whenever I switch over to the game screen and it starts bombing. And then when I lose, it switches me back here, which is really annoying. Okay. So now I can actually, uh, oh, reset connection. Yes. Make it stop. All right. And yeah, good. Okay. So now what I want to do is make my firing conditional. You know, I want it to happen at random, but that also means I want more opportunities for it to happen. So I'm going to change my timer interval. I'm going to switch it to 500. So five, every 500 milliseconds. So twice per second, there's a firing opportunity. Okay. And whenever there's a firing opportunity, there's a chance that it fires. So how do I handle the idea of chance? Well, I can use, uh, generate a pseudo random number. So first I'm gonna bring in an if block. So I don't want to always fire. I only want to fire sometimes. So let me grab a block here. And so I'm gonna use random integer here. So random integer, generates um, a pseudo random integer between one and a hundred. Well, I want it to fire, you know, fairly often actually. So I'm going to generate a random number from one to four. And then if that number happens to be a one that I'm going to fire. So in other words, I've got like a one in four chance or a 25% chance of getting attacked every half second. And this should make the game significantly more engaging and interesting and less predictable. So let me go ahead and connect. Let me scan my QR code. Okay, and let's bring up this video game. Okay, so I'm going to start the game. Okay. Um, and so now it, it's firing pretty often, but I don't really know when he's going to fire, you know? Okay. And yep, sure enough, he got me. I lost that time. And let me go ahead and play again. Whoops. I closed the app. Whoops. Sorry about that. Uh, whoop. Oh, get back over here. All right. Here's my game back. I'm going to kind of let him never really know when the bomb's going to fall. Oh, you got me that time. So this is a lot of fun. Uh, you can really create a pretty decent little video game without a tremendous amount of code. I mean, this is obviously one of the bigger programs we've written. There's there's quite a lot going on. Uh, but overall, I hope you found it to be straightforward to see how this is put together. Um, so I want to just encourage you guys to have fun with, with these ideas. Play around. See what you can make happen. I'll see you soon.